Hi everyone, and welcome to week two and day two of Neuromatch Academy, where I have the distinct pleasure of being a lecturer on the topic of linear dynamical systems. I'm really excited to be here because this is one of my favorite topics in the entire world. To introduce myself a little bit more, my name is Bang Brunton. I am an associate professor at the University of Washington, Seattle in the US, and I run a computational neuroscience lab where we basically love everything having to do with neuroscience behavior and data science. A lot of people in my lab are concentrating on building data-driven dynamic models, especially those that underlie the neuroactivity of natural behaviors. So I really like thinking about diverse animals and all the really cool things that they do in their natural habitats. And in particular, thinking about the neural systems and neural processes and neural computations that enable and underlie those behaviors. When I'm not doing research, I like knitting, I like hiking and rock climbing. I have two kids, so I spend a lot of time thinking about uh, how to explain things like math and neuroscience um, to them. And we really like wandering around the natural world and thinking and talking about how it is that things tick. And how things tick in the natural world um, is really a natural way of doing an introduction to dynamical systems, because dynamical systems is the mathematics of things that change in time. Depending on the time scale we're talking about, it could be a lot of very different things, but that has a lot in common in terms of the mathematical models that we use to describe them. If we're thinking about geological or evolutionary timescales, this could be the, the movement of continents, uh, climate change, the evolution of species. At the very opposite extreme, if you're thinking about nanoseconds or femtoseconds, this could be the conformation changes, the small molecules and proteins, the kinds of things that underlie all of the physical, chemical, and biological sciences. In the context of neuroscience, we are somewhat more restricted in, in size scales. So here what we're looking at are um, a couple of different orders of magnitude of size scales on the left-hand side there. And there's just really interesting things that are neuroscience relevant at each every single one of these size scales. A, from the size of a synapse all the way up to um, dendrites, neurons, layers of different neurons working together, the connections among different brain areas, all the way up to the order of a meter, which is the size of our bodies and so our nervous systems as they control our extremities. Not only does the brain have multi-scale multi structures in space, it is also interesting because it has multi-scale dynamics in time. So here on the horizontal axis, we're looking at, uh, again, orders of magnitude differences in time scales. Usually, the shortest time scale that is relevant for the study of neuroscience is an action potential, which is approximately one millisecond. But our lives are, most of us live on the order of decades. Of course, there are animals that don't live, live so long, but for us, it's the order of decades. And so everywhere between milliseconds and decades, there are fascinating things that are happening at each and every single one of these time scales. And so there are neurobiologists, psychologists, and computational neuroscientists who work at each and every single one of these time scales, modeling and trying to understand how these processes can be modeled and understood in terms of dynamical systems. And so the simplest formulation of a dynamical system is this equation here, where we're looking at dx dt, the rate of change of x as a function of x. And so x here is our state variable. It's the thing that we want to keep track of, it's whatever it is that's changing. So it could be the firing rate of a neuron or something like that. And we're expressing it in general as just some function of x. So the rate of change of x is a function of x. So Today, we're going to be mostly restricted to talking about linear dynamical systems. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means and what exactly is a linear dynamical system. And for a little bit of notation, I'm going to mostly be referring to the rate of change of x dx dt by this notation x dot, where you see a little dot on top of x. And that's just a shorthand for not only just a derivative of x, but the derivative of x with respect to t. For this dynamical system to be linear, x dot equals ax, where a is some number and x is a state. Okay, so it's really simple. It's only dynamical systems that could be expressed by the form of x dot equals ax. Now, if x is not just a single state variable, but more than one state variable, we can express it as an x vector, a state vector. There, again, the dynamical system could be written in a similar way, where every time you see a bold x, that means it's x is a vector, has more than one state. And again, x dot equals f of x. And if this is a linear, higher dimensional dynamical system, then we have, instead of a number a, we have a matrix bold a, which is uh, something that tells us about all of the linear dynamics that happens in the system. And so I'm going to go into a little bit more about what this means to be linear because okay, this is a really important topic. Um, and so for a system, 
of more than one variable to be linear, here's what we mean. Here are the types of functions of x that are linear. Some number times x1, the first variable. Some number times the second state variable, x2. A different number, potentially, times x3, the third variable, and so on. That's it. What we're not allowed to have is anything having any other form. So it can't be x squared, it can't be two variables multiplied by each other, it can't be a function of, of any other kind, fancier functions like cosines and sines and tangents, none of that. All of those are nonlinear functions. And so I like to introduce this topic by reminding people of this uh, quote from, from Tolstoy, which is the first line of his novel, Anna Karenina. It says, happy families are all alike, and every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. In the context of dynamical systems, the version goes the following, linear systems are all alike, and every nonlinear system is nonlinear in its own way. Okay, So the reason we're going to con concentrate and spend an entire day on linear systems is because they are relatively simple. And they're simple enough that we can understand them in a really deep way and um, and develop a lot of intuition that will come in handy when the system becomes linear later. So that's one reason we're going to spend a whole day talking about linear dynamical systems. The second reason is because even though we know the world involves these fancier functions that are not quite linear, is it turns out a lot of our observations and measurements in science can be explained really well just by considering linear dynamical systems. And so it's always a really, really good place to start. Start with the linear systems, get as far as you can, and then go on to look at nonlinear dynamical systems. And so we'll be talking about nonlinear dynamical systems for the remainder of the week. For today, we're just talking about linear systems. In this first tutorial, we're going to be looking at deterministic dynamical systems. And so I'm going to break that down and tell you what those words mean. Deterministic means that there is no element of chance in these dynamical systems. They're systems at changing time, but we can specify and write down exactly what's going to happen as a function of time. And so we're going to be spending some time in this first part of the tutorial looking at this very simple equation, x dot equals ax, which is a one-dimensional deterministic linear system. And so this type of system, even though it's remarkably simple, is, is actually a really good way of modeling lots and lots of things. So let's imagine, for example, you have bunny rabbits. And um, I'm going to get myself two bunny rabbits, and I'm going to put them on an island. Sounds silly, I know. But what do rabbits like to do? Well, they like making more bunny rabbits. And so if you put two bunny rabbits on an island, in this case, it's the island of Australia, so it's a really big island, but it's an island nonetheless. You wait a long time, and what happens is that you get an island full of bunny rabbits. Okay? So in this case, A is larger than zero, right? Because you have bunny rabbits, they make more bunny rabbits, which means X dot is greater than zero. And the result of that is that you end up with exponential growth. Now, this story is actually a fascinating one. Uh, what happened when people introduced non-indigenous bunny rabbits into the, into the island of Australia and they proliferated. It's actually a really fascinating story having not only to do with dynamical systems and exponential growth, but also involves virology and disease control. I don't have time to go into it right now, but I really encourage you to look up the story what happened when, uh, when bunny rabbits were introduced to Australia. So when this A is a number, it's a real valued number. If A is zero, then you can plug that into the equation above and you see that x dot equals zero, which means that the system is stable and nothing changes. If a is even slightly less than zero, then x dot is less than zero, which means we have exponential decay. These are the kinds of systems that people popularly use to uh, model things like, um, like the radioactive decay of elements. Fortunately, this very simple equation also has a really simple and very precisely written down analytic solution. It is e to the ax, where here x naught, x sub zero that I've written down here as x naught, is just the initial condition. It's where our system started, the value of x at time t equals zero. And so your exercise, if you if you choose to take it, and you don't have much of a choice since you signed up for this, for this workshop, is to simulate a one-dimensional deterministic dynamical system, x dot equals ax, and you're going to explore how the behavior of this system is determined by the parameter a, and what changes when you change a.